All right, so let's look at some of the properties that are going to be useful for our animation over here since we uh, have our timing on it just right. Well, uh, as you know, the two uh, required uh, animation attributes are animation name, which actually applies the animation you set all these keyframes for to the element that you're going to animate, and of course uh, animation duration, which is going to tell you how long that animation is going to happen. Um, but there are others that are going to be useful. Uh, oh, before we, we move on, let's just talk about this. Animation name. It, this is going to receive any property you put in there, but it needs to be defined in your CSS. So you could pop whatever you want in here. With regards to the animation duration, you could either use seconds or milliseconds. Like if I wanted this to only last six milliseconds, it'd be uh, 6ms instead of 6s. Uh, clearly, that gives you a really fine level of control, of, uh, you know, on uh, how long that uh, animation is going to take. The other one is going to be, let's just say, uh, for me, iteration would be an important one. Animation, iter, iteration. Okay, and that's how many times this animation is going to happen. Now you could put like a number value. The default is one, or you could put what I'm going to put infinite because this is going to supposed to keep on happening. Let's see. See, it's going to pass through once, and then uh, once it's done, it's going to just start uh, oh you know what animation iteration dash count I always kind of mess that up and I say infinite and now it should just keep on happening and happening and happening uh, this is cool but for me you know what I'd like it to do is to go back and forth back and forth so um, well what may, you know, potentially what I could have done is have to create a animation, a keyframe that says the opposite, and maybe it happens that once. Uh, anyway, I, I'm overcomplicating it. I don't have to do anything of the sort. What I can do is just do the direction. There's animation direction. direction if I could spell it and then I'll do alternate that's the only value it's going to take because it's saying is it if it's going to alternate or not so let's see here it's going one way then once it's done it should come right back yeah very nice okay so that works too um, the final the final animation property I'm going to use is a little bit of a delay uh, I want to delay it from the time that it actually plays um, once my page loads. So I'd say that my delay, yeah, 1.5 seconds just to pick any value I want. So it's going to start. Here he is just chilling, and then he goes. Now, if you're going to use a delay on yours, just make sure that you don't start your animation somewhere other than where it's initially positioned. Because, um, I mean, if I have, for example, my animation starts at left zero, uh, and he's positioned at left zero too. But if I were to position it at 10% and then refresh it, it's going to look a little weird. You know, here it is, and then it jumps back like that. So that's the one consideration when uh, using that. And th there are other uh, animation properties you could use and of course uh, a quick google search it will say animation uh, properties and we may have to say yeah css3 animation properties and it is well worth your time to look through them uh, and see what other ones may be useful for you there are there's actually even here now that i see there, there's a couple that that i kind of that seem to be missing like uh, I know there's a fill mode and there's a play state although I'm not sure why it's missing from here but um, anyway it you, you have a lot of flexibility um, with between the keyframes and the attributes that you could uh, apply to them to get a lot of functionality going